Hello everyone, people 41 here, and today I'm going to be talking about how the auto choke system works on the Kohler Courage XT series engines. So this is our subject, it's a Kohler Courage XT 6.75, 140 cc's I believe that is. Now I've removed the, uh, the uh, air filter and the air box assembly, uh, both for visibility and so that I could replace this carburetor. So first we'll go over some of the basic parts. Now for cold starts over here we have a vacuum uh, solenoid. Now this is actually plumbed with this line. You can see it comes right around and it's plumbed straight into the intake manifold. Now up here for hot starts we have a thermal actuator. Now the thermal actuator is linked directly to the choke plate. So you see if I rotate this rod from the thermal actuator it opens and closes the choke and that is because the thermal actuator uh, also acts as a spring. Inside here is a little bimetallic strip and that strip will tend to is connected to this rod and it will rotate that rod uh, depending on the temperature but it also springs back when it is cold so it's used as the return spring for the choke. The rod from the vacuum solenoid is also connected to the choke, however, it sits in this little groove. And what that basically means, hopefully you can see this with the shadows, is that uh, the choke can move independently of that rod when it needs to. So the way this works, when you're at a standstill, when the engine isn't running, the choke plate is automatically closed. That way you have choke. Uh, so you can get the extra fuel when the engine is first started. So the engine starts, and as soon as the engine starts, because this solenoid is plumbed into the intake manifold, as soon as the engine starts, this rod is going to be pulled inward, like so. And I, I might not be able to get it open all the way because of the space here, but it's going to pull on that rod, which is going to open the choke plate. Now, if I shut the engine off while it's cold still, What's going to happen is that rod will be released, it will extend again because there's no longer any vacuum on being applied to this solenoid. And the bimetallic strip is still cold uh, in the actuator, it's going to spring back closed again. That way the choke will be on uh, so that I can get enough fuel to start again. Now if I were to start it up and just run it like normal and let it get up to operating temperature, when I start it, this vacuum, actuator, this vacuum solenoid will be actuated. It'll pull on that rod and open the choke. Now, as this bimetallic strip heats up, it's going to want to push. It's going to want to turn this rod and push the linkage this way, holding the choke open. And it'll stay like that for as long as the engine is running. Now, when I shut off the engine when it's hot, the vacuum actuator rod is going to extend again, but because the thermal actuator is still hot, it will continue to hold the choke open. That way you aren't uh, uh, choking the engine when it's hot and flooding it out uh, when you go to try to start it when it's warm. Now as the engine cools down, the uh, strip inside the thermal actuator will retract, the rod will turn, and the choke will slowly close and be ready for the next cold start. Now as far as reliability of this system I can't really speak to that too much simply because I haven't worked on a lot of these. Um, compared to the Briggs & Stratton Quantum series uh, there are a few good things and bad things about this system. Uh, now the Briggs & Stratton Quantum if you haven't seen that video I did a video on the auto choke system on the Briggs & Stratton Quantums and I'll put a link to that. Now those systems are a bit similar, they use a thermal actuator for hot starts. Um, the main difference is the way they're set up and the fact that they use an air vane for cold starts. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to this system. Uh, the advantages are that it's less susceptible over the short term to sticking or clogging up. And the reason for that is that um, there, the vacuum uh, solenoid is actually going to be a lot stronger than an air vane. So it's less likely to get stuck. Uh, grass buildup is less likely to affect it. On the Briggs & Stratton Quantums, one of the common problems with the auto choke is that one of the pivots 
uh, will get dirt in it or it'll rust and then the vein can't move and you have choke problems. The downside to this is that I can see it having more issues over the long term and the reason for that is quite simple. Not only is this uh, housing for this vacuum actuator or solenoid uh, plastic which will likely degrade with time but it also uh, has a diaphragm inside it that in addition to this vacuum tube uh, are going to deteriorate over the long term especially if they sit so short term it might be a little more reliable long term it, I can see it having more problems and it doesn't help that Kohler doesn't exactly provide parts to fix this kind of stuff um, I had a leaky seal in the old carburetor and I had to buy a whole new carburetor because Kohler does not sell just the seal. Granted, the whole carburetor isn't that expensive. Uh, now as far as the thermal actuator, you're not going to see much of a difference in reliability of that versus any other design. Uh, it's the same design. It's a bimetallic strip inside there which rotates a rod, so reliability is about the same. So moving on to troubleshooting, now if you're having issues with the auto choke system, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the uh, air cleaner assembly so that you can get better access to everything. You're going to want to check the thermal actuator for proper operation. Now because the thermal actuator is linked directly to the throttle plate, if it has any issues, it can cause a lot of funny symptoms and you don't want to end up chasing your tail around in circles and wasting a bunch of time and money if the thermal actuator has an issue. So the way you're going to check this is you can just grab the uh, rod coming from it with your fingers. Now at rest the choke plate should be closed and you should be able to quite easily just rotate it and push the choke plate open like so. And when you let go of it the choke plate should spring closed. If it's either getting stuck or it's not springing back closed or it's binding up what you're going to want to do is disconnect the carburetor from the thermal actuator and verify which of them is causing the problem. If the thermal actuator uh, when it's disconnected is fairly easy to move and springs back like normal then you're going to be looking at possibly a binding choke shaft or maybe something fouling up in the linkage up here. Uh, if that all checks out fine then you can move on to the next step. Now if your engine will start but it coughs and it spits and it sputters and it never gets up to speed and just generally runs horribly. What's probably happening is your choke plate is staying closed because your vacuum actuator is not operating correctly and it's not opening the choke when the engine starts. Now if the engine starts fine cold and will keep running normally for as long as you have it on, but as soon as you turn it off and try to start it hot, either uh, coughs and uh, doesn't run right or won't start at all uh, and then if you uh, sit for a while and then come back when it's cold and it starts right back up you're going to be looking at an issue with the thermal actuator because what's happening is uh, it's not holding the choke open like it's supposed to when it's hot so when you uh, shut it off when warm the choke is closing again and so when you try to start it back up it's getting way too much fuel and flooding out and the engine is unable to start and so you end up with that little issue and that's really about it it's a fairly simple system uh, things can go wrong with them but there's not a whole lot of things to go wrong with them so hopefully this has helped you out and if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them down below